what is the Comstock Act? The name Comstock Act is something of a misnomer. When this congressional bill was signed into law in 1873 by President Ulysses S. Grant, it was called a bill for the suppression of trade in and circulation of obscene literature and articles of immoral use. The act was an amendment to the U.S. Postal Codes, and it was the first enforced federal law intended to block things from the U.S. mail that were related to sex, including erotic books and pictures, contraceptives, and various means of producing abortion. Supporters of the law thought these things were all immoral and therefore obscene. The Comstock Act also established that postal inspectors could prosecute people who violated the law. After 1873, most U.S. states used the language of the original Comstock Act to make things deemed obscene illegal under their own laws as well, hence the broader term Comstock laws. The man at the center of all of this is an activist named Anthony Comstock, who lobbied for these laws to be passed all around the country and then enforced them for 43 years both as a postal inspector for the U.S. Post Office and as secretary of a private organization named the New York Society for the Suppression of Vice. During the years that Comstock laws were enforced in the United States, millions of books, newspapers, magazines, prints, photographs, and circulars were seized and destroyed. These included things like newspapers with advertisements for sexually themed products, medical books with pictures of reproductive anatomy, and literature that discussed prostitution. More than 3,000 people were arrested for violations of the Comstock laws, and collectively they served more than 600 combined years in prison. Many were prosecuted for writing about topics that today are widely accepted in society, including atheism, feminism, homosexuality, and sexual health. And we will never know what intellectual and creative advances were not made at this time due to self-censorship because of the fear of criminal prosecution. Why did Comstock and supporters want to pass and enforce these laws? The simple answer is that they were evangelical Christians. They believed that sex outside of marriage for the purposes of procreation was a sin. They also believed that women should be subservient and submissive, and that anyone who advocated against their religious beliefs should be prosecuted. They wanted America to be a Christian nation using their own definition of what that was, and this was their first big legal success. The term obscene is really important in the language of all the Comstock laws because this word is still in legal use today. The root of the word comes from Latin for offstage, obscene, that which should be out of public view. In Comstock's day, that included a vast array of materials. But over the course of the 20th century, U.S. courts narrowed the standards for what was obscene, in many cases based on a broader reading of the First Amendment. Christian nationalist legal activism gradually lost favor over the course of the 20th century, and the Comstock Act has been essentially dormant for the last 50 years. In 1973, the Supreme Court in Miller v. California vastly narrowed what classified as obscene, and in Roe v. Wade, conferred the right to abortion services. Today, this antiquated law is relevant once again as conservative activists are trying to resurrect the Comstock Act, America's first law aimed at suppressing what Christian nationalists viewed as immoral.